This is a brand new Chevy Colorado ZR2, and it's the coolest mid-size truck. And today, I'm going to show you why. I've borrowed this Colorado ZR2 here in Seattle at the Seattle Tacoma International Airport using Turo, which is this service that lets you rent other people's cool and interesting cars instead of normal, boring, everyday rental cars. You can sign up for Turo if you click the link in the description below, and you can use my promo code to get $25 off your first Turo rental. But back to the ZR2. Now, if you're into trucks, you're probably into the Ford Raptor, which is the coolest truck, well, maybe ever. Think of this as basically a baby Ford Raptor. It's just a mid-size truck, not a full-size like the Raptor, but it's got most of the style and most of the capability and most of the towing capacity. Yes, that's right. You see, even though the Raptor is a full-size truck with a big brawny turbocharged V6, this is a diesel. And so while the Raptor can tow up to 8,000 pounds, this can tow up to 7,700 pounds. Pretty impressive. Of course, the real kicker is price. The Raptor starts around $50,000, but add in options and extras, and the average asking price for a new Raptor on Auto Trader is just a shade under $75,000. Meanwhile, the average asking price for a new Colorado ZR2 on Auto Trader is just $43,000, and that is a huge difference. But there's more to the ZR2 than that. So today, I'm going to take you on a tour of it, and I'm going to show you around the coolest mid-size pickup on the market. Then I'm going to get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the Colorado ZR2, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer. Now, I'm going to start this tour with the primary reason why the Colorado ZR2 is the coolest midsize pickup, and that would be all the off-roader goodies that take this thing from just a regular midsize truck to a serious off-roader. Now, your angle is basically the coolest angle in the Colorado, and that's because you can see basically all of the upgrades, starting with the 31-inch off-road tires, which basically allow the Colorado to take you anywhere your desires may want to go. Now, because Chevy put those larger off-roading tires on there, that means that the truck is wider than the standard Colorado. In fact, it's three and a half inches wider. And so as a result of that, Chevy also had to add these cool little fender flares on the wheel arch that kind of make the truck have a more aggressive, wider, meaner, off-roady looking stance. Adding the mud tires and making a true off-roader also meant lifting the Colorado, and this truck is two inches higher than the standard Colorado. The ZR2 has almost nine inches of ground clearance, which is pretty good for a mid-size pickup. But my favorite Colorado ZR2 off-road upgrade is the front bumper. Now, Chevy took the standard Colorado front bumper and completely removed it. Instead, they put on this sort of minimalist front bumper that's angled upwards to increase the ZR2's approach angle so you can climb hills or go over rocks or whatever. But the coolest part about the bumper is that they shaved it from the sides. Basically, what that means is you look at the Colorado ZR2 from the front and you can see the tires. That means there's just less bodywork for it to clear when it's going on serious off-road trails and you're not going to get the standard bumper hung up and then have it torn off. Now, when people are modifying regular vehicles to turn them into off-roaders, they will install a bumper just like this one in order to have better ground clearance and approach angle, but Chevy did it from the factory and that is pretty cool. And to be honest, it looks really good on this truck. A couple of other cool off-roader components in the ZR2, you look under the bumper and you can see there is a skid plate under there. That is a very important accessory. If you're off-roading, you hit a boulder or a rock or something like that, it'll hit the skid plate instead of smashing into some important component under the vehicle. And maybe most important, the Colorado has four-wheel drive, obviously, four-wheel low and four-wheel high, and you can choose when you're off-roading which you want. And it also has a front and rear differential lock controlled by two separate buttons inside the interior in the center control stack. That's pretty cool. You know an automaker is getting serious about making a four-wheel drive off-roader vehicle when they give it front and rear differential locks. Then you know it's not really all just a bunch of cosmetic upgrades to make it look cool. But all that cool off-road stuff isn't the only reason why this Colorado is the coolest mid-sized pickup truck. It also has to do with what's under here. This is the only diesel-powered mid-sized pickup currently on sale in North America. Now you can get a standard gasoline engine, but I highly recommend getting the diesel. Yes, it's only a four-cylinder. It's a 2.8 liter turbo diesel four-cylinder. And yes, you only get 181 horsepower, which I admit is not all that brawny, but 
you get 369 pound-feet of torque, which is quite a bit in a mid-sized truck. And that's what gives this thing its 7,700 pound maximum towing capacity if you get a certain body style and a certain drivetrain. Although all Colorados with a diesel tow over 7,000 pounds, which really is full-size truck territory. In fact, this tows more than any mid-sized truck. The other benefit of the turbo diesel is, of course, fuel economy. You get 20 miles per gallon city and 28 highway, according to the EPA. So in mixed driving, you'll get something like 24 miles per gallon in a lifted, off-roader, cool-looking truck that pulls 7,700 pounds. Now, one other thing I like about the ZR2 is that in spite of all the off-roader goodies and the brawny, mean look that it has, the size is just more manageable than a large truck because it's a mid-size. Check this out. Even with the wider tires and the three and a half inch width increase to accommodate them, this truck is still almost a foot narrower than a Ford Raptor, and that makes it a lot easier to drive in virtually all circumstances. And one other thing I like about the Colorado is this giant bar in the back. Now, I don't think all the ZR2s have this bar, but I am so glad this one does because it provided me a lot of amusement while I've had this car as a rental. First, I wanna start with the fact that it is a light bar, just like those pickup trucks in the 80s had. It's a giant bar and mounted on the top of it are two tremendously powerful LED spotlights. Now, when I rented this car from the guy from Turo, the owner of this car, he told me you can turn them on, but they're not legal for road use but they come with the car factory. In order to turn them on, there's a little switch to the left of the steering wheel. You just sort of push it and hold it down for a little while, and then the spotlights come on, and it's day, so you can't really see that they have any effect, but I promise you, at night, they light up the world. And speaking of lighting in the bar, another interesting thing about the bar is that it completely covers up the third brake light. The factory third brake light on the Colorado is mounted in the back of the cab on the roof, and this bar gets in its way. Now, this is a little bit weird because the bar has on it lights that aren't legal for street use and then the bar covers up the third brake light which is mandated by federal regulation and this bar this isn't some weird aftermarket accessory that the owner of this truck decided to get these things they put them on at the factory or at least at your dealer this is from Chevrolet fortunately they did figure out a way around the third brake light thing they just added a second third brake light to the bar itself so if you look on the back of a Colorado ZR2 with the bar you will see there's a third brake light on the cab and then another one on the bar. The one on the cab doesn't work. It doesn't do anything. Only the one on the bar actually lights up when you put on the brakes. And I'm not done with my interest in this bar just yet because there are a couple more things to cover. First, I want to talk about the fact that it says Colorado inside the bar. That's kind of cool. Initially, it's just sort of stamped in there, but then Chevrolet has this backing plate that is apparently painted red and they take it in and they screw it in with these six tough looking screws to really emphasize the fact that it's a Colorado. Now above the Colorado script is what appears to be the Adidas logo. I'm not sure why that's there, but uh you know, it is. Either way, I have to admit, I'm kind of making fun of this bar, but I actually think it looks really cool and it contributes to the overall sort of off-roader, more capable look of this pickup truck. If I was getting a ZR2, I'd make sure it had the bar. Next up, I'm back here. One of the things I was thinking about as I was driving this truck this week and looking around it, there's a lot of ZR2 logos on the outside. There's a ZR2 logo on the rear fender over here. There's a, a ZR2 logo in the bed. And that kind of got me thinking, you know, the ZR1, is like the most powerful Corvette. 755 horsepower, 210 mile an hour ultra Corvette. And then ZR2 is an off-roader mid-size pickup. Doesn't really seem like there's any consistency there. I wonder what ZR3 will be. Maybe like a convertible version of the Sonic Next, we move on to the back of the Colorado, where we do see one drawback compared to the Raptor in terms of size. The rear is just not all that big. I would say it's about average. It'd be a little bit difficult for tall people. And if you plan on using this as a family vehicle, it's gonna get a little tight back here. A couple of interesting things about the rear seats. One is that they fold down for cargo. So if you wanna throw stuff back here and you don't wanna get your leather dirty or messed up or whatever, you can fold the seats down and then you can put the stuff on the tops of the seat. It also creates sort of a flat load floor, which may be easier for for certain items you want to put in the back seat. Another interesting thing about the back seat is that there is a storage pocket on the back of the front passenger seat, but 
There is not one on the back of the front driver's seat. So if you're sitting back here, you only have one little storage pocket where you can store stuff. I'm not really sure why that cost-cutting decision was made, but it was. Next up, moving on to the front of the Colorado, one of the things you'll notice the second you get inside this thing is that it is very simple, basic, traditional up here. It's like an old school truck. There's not all that much fancy, weird, modern stuff. For example, the gear lever. I get in all these newer cars and gear levers. Everybody's trying to get creative and make them cool. This thing just has a gear lever. You put it in park to put it in park. You put it in D to put it in drive. It's really simple. In fact, this truck's so simple that it still has an old school key. This is like a $44,000 vehicle. You still have to stick a key in and turn it. There's no push button start. Oddly, in spite of those relatively simple things, this truck has heated seats and not just heated seats, but there are three different stages of heating you can choose from. And you can also choose whether you want just the backrest heated or the backrest and the bottom of the seat. This isn't something I can't even do in my AMG Mercedes. And yet you can do it in a pickup up truck that still uses a key. Also, in spite of that, this thing doesn't have a sunroof and it doesn't even have power seats. There's a power to move it forward and backwards, but otherwise everything else is completely manual. But you can choose exactly where on the seat you want your heating to exist. Next up, a couple of interesting buttons in the interior of this vehicle. One of them is marked exhaust brake. That's a button you won't see in most vehicles and it controls the exhaust brake. Basically what that means is you push it and then you can use it when you're towing a trailer and you're going down a hill. Maybe the standard brakes are just not cutting it. They're getting too hot because of all the extra weight. So you turn on the exhaust brake and it forces exhaust from the exhaust back into to the engine and it kind of slows the engine operation in order to slow the truck down without you having to wear out your brakes. Another interesting item in this truck I find is the manual mode for the gear lever. Most cars you kind of move the lever over and you can pull it or push it in manual mode like an old school manual transmission. This thing it's a button so you're driving along and, and then tap. tap. It's kind of a silly little way to do the manual mode, although General Motors has been doing it this way for years. Of course, most people don't use the manual mode, but it can come in handy if you're going down a hill and you want to keep the engine in a lower gear. Finally, a couple of interesting infotainment system quirks, one of which is called rear seat reminder. This is a really cool feature. If you are approaching your Colorado, you unlock the door and you open the rear door and put something in it, presumably a small child, like in a car seat, then you walk around, get in the car and drive away. If you park the car, it will remind you, hey, you might want to check in back so you don't accidentally leave a child in a car on like a hot day. It's a good feature. More and more cars are offering it, but I think GM had it first. One other infotainment system quirk that I like, there is an item in there under settings for voice control confidence threshold. Basically, I guess this means that if you feel you have a really good rapport with your voice control system, you can turn the confidence threshold higher so it won't confirm with you if what you just said is correct. It will just do whatever you said, but that's only if you feel you've really mastered voice control and the two of you are really getting along well. Otherwise, you set the confidence threshold lower, so it asks you to make sure whatever command you just gave is what you actually want. Finally, moving under the hood, Now I've already showed you the engine, but one quirk I like under here is the fact that there are several items under the hood that are labeled on them that you shouldn't shoot them with water because Chevy knows that people are going to take this thing off-roading and they want to let you know, yeah, you can clean out your engine, but you don't want to spray water on this. And so those are the quirks and features of the Colorado ZR2. And now it's time to get out on the road in the baby Raptor. All right, driving the ZR2. And I'm not going to take this off-road. That violates Turo's policies, but... Nonetheless, I will drive it on the street, which is where most ZR2 owners will spend most of their time anyway. Oh, I'm sorry if it's a little shaky. I lost my camera mount and had to get an emergency replacement. This will not happen again. All right, so first impression, I've actually been driving this thing for a couple of days now. Um, and I've been pretty impressed with it. It's a little bit harsher and noisier, you know, than, than some $45,000 vehicles. I mean, that price point puts you in some BMWs and Audis. But obviously, you know, this truck's not about that. It's, it's a capable truck and, and it's not, it doesn't feel that cheap or anything. Everything's just sort of basic and simple and plain. There are buttons for everything. You know, there's no crazy screens or cool technology or anything like that in the interior. But, uh, you know, it, it works on the inside. In terms of the diesel engine and its noise, I'm actually surprised because uh, it's just really not all that noisy. 
uh, you really wouldn't be able to tell that it was a diesel from the inside, uh, just listening to it. From the outside, you can tell it just a little bit. It's not necessarily that much louder than a gasoline engine, but obviously diesels just have a, a sort of a certain uh, sound to them. I think one big question that people who are considering a ZR2 will probably want to know is, is you know, can you daily drive it? Is it, is it comfortable? Yeah, it's comfortable in every way. The tires, the tires do have, you know, a little bit more tire noise than a traditional uh, pickup truck, even a normal one. Obviously a lot more than a car. I have driven lifted trucks and lifted vehicles that have really like serious mud and crazy tires. Those things are annoying. This isn't anywhere near that level, but it's definitely something to be aware of if you're thinking about getting a vehicle like this. Um, in terms of fuel economy, uh, I've been driving this thing, it looks like 75 miles now uh, since I've been here in the Seattle area, and I'm averaging 21 miles per gallon. This is almost all city driving. I've only been on the highway just to pick it up from the airport and drive it about 20 minutes. Other than that, it's only been in the city. So 21 miles per gallon city, I mean, that is really, really impressive. Uh, in my opinion, for a truck like this. Uh, I was, I actually reset it just before I got on the highway and I saw 30 miles per gallon on the highway, no problem, for about 10, 12 minutes until I started getting into traffic. Aside from the tires and, you know, the fuel economy with the diesel, everything that you'd expect from any other mid-size pickup sort of goes for this one. The visibility is good, the driving position is nice, you feel like you're driving basically a mid-size SUV. It's not really all that much bigger than that. Um, you know, the, the, the diesel could use a little bit more power, in my opinion. I mean, everybody's super into diesel because they can pull and whatever. And I always kind of feel diesels feel a little bit lacking in terms of actual acceleration. And I think that that's true here as well. But I mean, this is a comfortable truck. It's a roomy truck. I got, I have enough room. I'm 6'4". I got a lot of headroom. My, my knees are a little bit squished, but just barely. I mean, I, not enough that it would cause me not to buy it, to be honest. Um, you know, it, it handles reasonably well. It feels like a like a midsize SUV. The ride comfort is great. It's not harsh. It's not overly harsh. It do, I mean, you do feel bumps. Um, it certainly is no luxury car, and, and at this price point, you could certainly buy a lot of cars that are more comfortable. But it's not uncomfortable. Um, it just sort of is a is a decent you know everyday usable vehicle that just happens to have sort of this really cool off-roading persona and a lot of the hardware to back up that really cool off-roading persona, which in my opinion is probably the coolest part. So that's the new Chevy Colorado ZR2. This is a cool truck, and if you can't afford a Raptor, it might just be the coolest truck. But it's also economical. The diesel gets over 20 miles per gallon in the city and almost 30 miles per gallon on the highway. And it's also capable since it can tow over 7,000 pounds. What more could you want? And now it's time to give it a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the ZR2 is nice looking for a truck and it gets a 6 out of 10. Acceleration with the diesel is weak, over 7 seconds 0 to 60 and it gets a 1 out of 10. Handling is fine, secure, but not exciting or thrilling or sporty and it gets a 3 out of 10. Fun factor would normally be pretty low for a mid-sized truck, but the ZR2's off-road abilities unlock some extra possible fun compared to a regular pickup, so it gets a 4 out of 10. Cool factor 2 is helped by the ZR2's exciting styling and its intriguing diesel engine and it gets a 5 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 19 out of 50. Next up, moving on to the daily category, starting with features, the ZR2 is pretty average with some nice and modern stuff and some really basic stuff and it gets an average 5 out of 10. Comfort is fine, not especially luxurious nor especially punishing and it gets a 5 out of 10. Quality also is average, reliability will probably be decent, but the interior is only so-so and it gets a 5 out of 10. Practicality is good, the ZR2 can traverse all sorts of terrain and it can tow a large amount, but the interior is a bit small and while the bed is obviously large, it's also open to the elements, so it's not quite as practical as a huge hatchback. Anyway, it gets a 6 out of 10. Finally, there's value, and while the ZR2 is a cool off-roader truck, it's a bit of a tough sell, at least to me, in the $40,000 plus range. Still, it's a good all-rounder, and it gets a 6 out of 10, bringing the daily score to 27 out of 50. Add it up, and the Doug score is 46 out of 100, and you can see how it compares to some other similar vehicles. I think the 4Runner TRD Pro and the Wrangler are better, but the ZR2 is good if you really want, or if you need, a truck.